Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today in gaming, DICE are fixing some major exploits in Battlefield 2042. Halo Infinite's Battle Pass just got a lot less grindy, Rockstar might have fixed their GTA remasters, and much more. Players discovered a major exploit in Battlefield 2042. It renders smoke invisible, which could have a massive impact on the flow of matches. This exploit is especially problematic because of how easy it is to implement. Just opening an in-game menu when someone throws a smoke grenade will remove the cloud. The good news is, DICE have a fix in the work. There's no ETA, so it'll probably be a hot fix or come with the early December update. The devs are also working on several bugs reported since 2042's first major update. Parachute hitboxes are getting fixed, so vehicles can't kill airborne players by shooting something other than their character model. Rubber banding caused by splash damage is getting worked on. Improvements for placing deployable gadgets are in the works. Mouse input is being looked at to try and squash some input latency problems. Yeeting yourself off a ladder at warp speed and wingsuiting across the entire map will be fixed in the December update. Now one of the caveats to all this good news is that most of it's coming from a single single DICE developer on their personal social media account. Things are always subject to change, so don't expect every fix to roll out immediately unless you see it in the patch notes. Halo Infinite's Battle Pass grind just got a whole lot more tolerable. 343 released an update today that gives players six new match bonuses every day. Completing your first match will reward you with 300 XP, and the following five matches will reward a bit less until eventually dropping to the standard 50 XP per match. The devs are working on a more extensive overhaul of Infinite's Battle Pass progression system. It's unclear if there will be any significant changes coming with the official launch on the 8th. However, we do know that there will be a variety of campaign-related unlocks players can earn. Overall, Infinite's cosmetic unlocks have been incredibly frustrating for players. It's not uncommon for new live service titles to launch with oppressive-feeling grinds for otherwise bland or limited cosmetics. But Halo is kind of a different beast with 20 years of content to draw from. The recent seasonal updates for the Master Chief Collection have offered tons of variety without demanding too much of players' time. Hopefully, there's much more in store for or Infinite's future battle passes and events. Now that being said, unlike most live service games, Halo Infinite's battle passes never expire. So years from now, if you want, you can go back and grind out an early season battle pass for whatever cosmetics you might want. That might explain the steep time commitment required to unlock stuff, but even so, it still adds up. Completing the season one pass, even with the new XP bonuses, will still take dedicated players several weeks. Compounding that grind with future battle passes and it goes from taking a few weeks to months or more of your time to unlock everything that you paid for. 343 also addressed concerns about cheaters. The game recently saw an influx of cheaters coming from PC and cross-playing with console players through the matchmaking system. 343 says they anticipated these issues. They'll be rolling out consistent improvements and issuing bans for people caught cheating. CD Projekt Red have confirmed a major update is launching for Cyberpunk 2077 by the end of March 2022. They had previously confirmed the next-gen upgrade for the game would launch by then. Cyberpunk has finally started making a positive impact on new players thanks to several significant patches released this year, but a much more extensive overhaul update is in the works. The developers are also working on the game's first expansion and a next-gen upgrade for The Witcher 3. That being said, we won't know if these updates are the substantial improvements that we've been waiting for, but the signs do seem to indicate that they could be. Rockstar released an update for the GTA remasters that fixed over 100 issues. These include problems like rain rendering incorrectly, broken cameras, wonky character models, and more. And while these fixes are great to see, they're still fixes for remasters that are wild departures from the look and feel of the original games. In some ways, those departures are for the better. The remasters have better controls and some modern quality of life improvements players are pretty happy with, but the major change to the visual style of the original games are a sticking point with fans. This update does a lot to improve the remasters, but it doesn't seem like Rockstar will completely overhaul them in the way that some players want. 
Warzone's new map Caldera and its Vanguard integration were recently delayed. The last hours of Verdansk event will now kick off on the 6th. This event will offer some new cosmetics that tie into the new map. As for the map itself, it'll go live on the 9th. The update is free for all players and integrates all of Vanguard's weapons with Warzone. The developers haven't said if Verdansk will still be available once Caldera goes live. This is the first time Warzone's main map has been totally replaced with something new. Verdansk may be going away forever. That seems pretty unlikely though. It will probably remain available as its own playlist or get brought back in for future seasonal events. DayZ creator Dean Hall is launching his new survival game Icarus on Friday. It borrows several elements from DayZ and other survival shooters like collecting resources, base building, and PvE elements. However, unlike most survival shooters, you have a set amount of time to complete your objectives and escape the map. This is a mechanic that we've seen in Extraction Royale style games like The Cycle or Hunt Showdown. The main difference with Icarus from those games is that the extraction timer can last anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes all the way out to days at a time. Icarus was originally going to launch as a free-to-play title, but that plan was scrapped in favor of a paid release. It's been available in beta for the past seven weekends, and reviews have generally been positive. This might be a big return to form for Hall. His studio Rocket Works has published multiple well-reviewed games over the years, but none of them have matched the hype or scope of DayZ. Xbox Cloud Gaming is testing a new feature in the preview build of Microsoft's Edge web browser. It's called Clarity Boost. At first glance, it looks like a pretty standard sharpening filter, but on closer inspection, it's cleaning up the artifacts inherent to streaming compressed video at a limited bitrate. The result isn't exactly a night and day difference, but it's still a welcome improvement. The only catch is that you might see a mild increase in power draw with this feature enabled. Clarity Boost might be something to avoid avoid if you do a lot of cloud gaming on your phone or laptop and want to preserve your battery life. Reports suggest factories in Taiwan are gearing up for NVIDIA's RTX 4000 GPUs. We expect a reveal of the next-gen graphics hardware sometime in 2022. There's some wild rumors going around that the 4000 series GPUs will be consuming up to 600 watts, offering double the performance and even more. But right now, it's all speculation. The real question will be availability. Getting your hands on an RTX 3000 series GPU is still nearly impossible for most people. Tech experts expect supply shortages across the industry well into next year. It's unlikely Nvidia will be able to meet demand. Before we get to our final story today, I just want to say thanks for tuning in. If you're new around here and enjoyed our news coverage, consider subscribing. That keeps you in the loop whenever we upload breaking news and is the best way to support our coverage. The pre-alpha for Company of Heroes 3 is now available. It's the first new entry in the franchise since 2013. It officially launches next year, but starting today you can dive into a limited selection of multiplayer content. The reviews are very positive so far, with many highlighting the pre-alpha is an exciting look at the return of a legendary franchise. Like its predecessors, Company of Heroes 3 is a World War II themed RTS game. The pre-alpha ends on the 6th. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.